Hi everybody and welcome to another video by LitCrypt. In today's video we're going to be looking at why and how to vary your sentence types and I'm going to give you six tips that you can try today. The first thing I'm going to talk about is why should you vary your sentence types in your writing. There are some different reasons but first of all variety is the spice of life which means that the more we change things up the more we diversify the way that we write the more interesting and engaging our writing becomes. There are some other reasons that you can vary your sentence types. For example, you can better engage your reader into your writing. You can gain a higher score because most mark schemes will reward variety of sentence types. It's a good personal challenge to improve your writing and you will indeed become a better writer if you can diversify the kinds of sentence structures that you use in your writing. The different kinds of sentences that we're going to be looking at in today's video are as follows. Number one, the burger sentence. Number two, the DD sentence. The triplet sentence. Number four, the reverse triplet sentence. The fifth is the signpost sentence. And the last one is the adverbial phrase sentence. For each of the different sentence types I just went through, I'm going to give you clear examples, including how to use the punctuation that you need in order to make the sentences work best. Starting off with a burger sentence. Now, if you look at the bottom, you can see that the grammatical name for this type of sentence is a compound sentence. This means that the middle part in pink in the example is a dependent or subordinate clause and it doesn't make sense on its own. You need to place commas correctly around the clause in order to make this kind of sentence work. So let's have a quick look at the example. Athens, which is the capital city of Greece, is said to be named after the goddess Athena. You can think of the pink part of the sentence, the subordinate clause, as the filling of the burger. By itself, which is the capital city of Greece, that clause doesn't make sense. A little bit like the filling of a burger. To really get the most out of it, you need to eat it between two slices of bread. And it's the same thing with this kind of sentence. It doesn't work to just have the clause by itself. It does need the supporting words on either side. And you can see in turquoise where commas have been placed in order to make the burger sentence work. The second kind of sentence I want to talk to you about is the DD sentence, which stands for description detail. The way this works is you think of the sentence in two halves. The first half, you describe something in three to five words and then you add detail after a colon. So the type of punctuation that you use here is a colon, as you can see highlighted in turquoise in the example. The detail must be relevant and build on the description in the first part of the sentence. And that first part of the sentence before the colon is usually shorter than the second part, which goes into a little bit more detail. You can think of a colon as replacing the word because. So let's have a look at the example. Gothic horror is popular. Thousands of people search daily for Gothic literature on YouTube. You could easily replace the colon there with the word because, and you can see how the second part of the sentence is longer than the first part, which makes sense because you're adding detail. And by the way, if you're interested in finding out more about Gothic literature, then click the top right hand corner of your screen now to watch my video on the features of Gothic literature. Essentially, this type of sentence uses a list of three things, usually nouns, verbs, or adjectives for impact. This is a really popular technique in advertising and persuasive writing in general, and it's an easy way to spice up our writing. So if we look at the example here, success is characterized by persistence, dedication, and self-belief. You've got those three qualities, those three abstract nouns, and hence this type of sentence being called a triplet sentence. Number four is the reverse triplet sentence. And as you can imagine, this type of sentence places the list of three things at the start of the sentence instead of at the end. So in the example previous, we had persistence, dedication, and self-belief at the end of the sentence. Here, we've moved them to the front of the sentence. So it reads persistence, dedication, self-belief. Success is characterized by these three qualities. The types of punctuation that you need to use to make a reverse triplet sentence work are commas, because you need to place commas in between the items on the list, and a semicolon at the end of the three qualities. So persistence, comma, dedication, comma, self-belief, semicolon. And then 
you can follow that up with the statement, success is characterized by these three qualities. This is an easy way to spice up your writing and you don't need to use a list of three necessarily. You could start with an adjective or two adjectives or several adjectives. The whole idea here is to get away from starting every sentence with the word the, which is something that is seen a lot in student writing. The signpost sentence, as the name implies, is a sentence that begins giving the reader a direction or idea about where the sentence is heading. It's a little bit like driving down a highway. Another way that you can think of a signpost word is as a discourse marker, which is the more grammatically correct word to use here. And as mentioned previously, it allows us, before we've even read the sentence or the paragraph, to have a fairly clear idea about what to expect in that sentence or paragraph. And discourse markers can also include connectives or linking words or phrases. You can see from the examples that discourse markers and connectives are usually followed by a comma, which I've highlighted in turquoise. In the sentences, you can see some examples of signpost words or discourse markers. For example, if we look at the first one, first and foremost, just by reading those words, we know that the sentence is going to be tackling the first point. So signpost sentences are useful if you're trying to organize your writing in a slightly better way or you want to make sure that your reader is following you. An adverbial phrase sentence is a phrase that consists of several words that give us more information about how, where, or when an action is done. And you can place these words at the beginning, at the middle, at the end of your sentence. It really doesn't matter where. So if we have a look at the different examples, looking at the first one, I crept into my room at midnight. This gives us information about when something was done. So the something here being the action the verb, hence these being known as adverbial phrases because they give us more information about an action. And the last example tells us something about how the action of handing an envelope was done, in this case, without a word. You can also play around with this a little bit and just start your sentence with an adverb. So rather than a phrase, you can start with an adverb. So for example, you could say, silently, he handed me an envelope. Thank you for watching this video about how to vary your sentence structures. I hope you found it useful and if you did, please like, share and subscribe to LitGrid now so you don't miss out any other videos. I upload new videos twice a week. Thanks and see you next time.